praise God. And he's a great God. But don't give up on prayer. Just keep trusting God. It's, you just got to keep trusting God, eh? Don't give up. Even though it seems so far away, so far away it seems, but we just kept trusting God and relying on Him. And He um, He brought the miracle around. And um, we may be able to talk to Him on the phone soon. <laughs> we may be able to. Praise God. So just a little bit of, of last week. I told Billy because I bent over too much with that, so I'll try to I'll try to read with my glasses. I'm still too close, I can't read it. So I've got to bend down a bit. Our op last bit bit from last week, our, our opposition will come to kill us spiritually, physically, and our vision and our purpose. But do not be afraid. This, these are all taken out of scripture. These are just from from Nehemiah four, just little bits that I took out of, out of scripture. Remember the Lord, great and awesome. Fight for your brethren, your sons and your daughters and your house, the church. And I said last week, if you're not fighting for them, who's going to be fighting for them? And like no one was going to be fighting for me and Billy to be able to see our grandchildren. But we had to fight. Spiritual, not of flesh and blood. Power, powers and principalities. We had to fight in that realm. And God's opened the way to, for us to... We haven't seen them yet. But we, we will be able... We've seen them. We've seen photos. Recent photos. We've been a couple of days. They were taken by Stacy. We've been a couple of days. And we will talk next time Stacey can be with them, she'll FaceTime us and, and we will get to talk to them. So the power of prayer. We, no one, but no one else was in that fight for us. We had to be in that fight for ourselves. And, and I don't even think, I don't, like Tom might be throwing a prayer up here and there, but I don't think he's in the battle either. I don't think he's in the fight at the moment either. So if no one else is fighting, we've got to, we, we're the only ones that are fighting for our brothers and our sisters and our uncles and aunties and we're the only ones. We've got to fight and we don't fight expecting the victory straight away. We fight knowing the victory's coming. Amen. Amen. That's our fight. Amen. When our enemies heard that it was known to us and that God, this is about the war, and that God... Um, and that God had brought their plot to nothing. They, they, the, the enemy heard that Nehemiah was building the wall and that, and they were angry and they were furious and they weren't happy, but God had brought their plot to nothing. What they plotted to do against Nehemiah and the Jew, uh, his Jews came to nothing. Not when we had fought and the enemy was defeated, <laughs> but when it was known to us. Mm. when it was made known to us what their plan was, that's when it was defeated. Not when we fought, but when it was made known to us. The victory is in knowing the enemy's plan. Like Paul shaking off the dead, deadly viper, return to work continued on like nothing happened. That was when they were building the wall, the way Paul returned and shook the viper off and the, when he was there and come out of the bit of wood in the fire and he shook it off and they watched him wait to see if he was going to die and he never died. He just shook it off and kept living and cooked himself a feed or whatever he done. The same way they just went back to the wall and they continued building on the wall like nothing had happened. So these are all things out of Nehemiah. Chapter, so they're taken from scripture. They're just little passages of scripture that I use, not the whole scripture. But just before we get into the message, this is, I told Lily yesterday, I said to Lily, when you hear the message tomorrow, Lily, just remember that wolves hunting packs and that foxes 
running by himself. They hunt, they, they, they go by himself. I said, remember this, Billy? And all the way through the message, remember that. Wolves in packs and foxes go by themselves. Praise God that it is important to hear at the beginning. Amen. That foxes are loners and wolves hunt in packs. So in... Oh, I'll turn it off, sis. I'll have to turn it back off. But anyway, so I'm starting from Nehemiah. I'm still still at Nehemiah. Still in Nehemiah. So it's gonna be a little bit because I've got a little bit of stuff to read today, but but it's good. But it's um yeah, not all all scriptures, other stuff that I looked up to. So in Nehemiah chapter four, but it so happened. When St. Ballot, I read this the other day, when St. Ballot heard that we were rebuilding the wall, that he was furious and very ignorant, ignorant and mocked the Jews. And he spoke before the brethren and the army of Samaria and said, What are these feeble Jews doing? Will they fortify themselves? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they complete, complete it in a day? Will they revive the stones from the heaps of rubbish? Stones that are burnt? Now Tobiah the Ammonite was beside him and said, and he said, whatever they build, if even a fox goes up on it, they, he will break down their stone wall. Hear, O our God, for we are designed, are despised, turn their reproach on their head, own heads, and give them as plunder to a land of captivity. So, Father, I thank you for your word, Almighty God. I praise you and honour you. Father, just pray for revelation, Lord, that you give us revelation of your word, Father, Lord, that you just yeah, lead us and guide us through revelation, Father. Praise you and honour you, Lord. You give revelation, the word becomes alive, Father. But without revelation, Lord, it's just the word, Father. But with revelation, Lord, comes alive, Father. We need it to be alive and living, Almighty God. We praise you and honour you, Father. In Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Can you see up here, sis? Yeah. It's got side chat. Push on in. Up the top there. Side chat. Push on in. Then go over the end side chat. Yeah. Then go over to the beginning. Look right over to the beginning, that one. That's the wrong one. <laughs> Go down the bottom and, and bring the other one up. Put that one down the bottom and bring the other one up. Put the, the other one down there. Do you know, can you do that for a for you? Just want to swap, swap them over. Swap slide shows. Yeah, slide shows, yeah. So praise God. So I'm just going to go one, or maybe one or two. But it, it so happened when St. Ballot heard that we were rebuilding the wall, that he was furious, very ignorant, and mocked the Jews. And he spoke before the, his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, What are these feeble Jews doing? Will they fortify themselves? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they complete it in a day? Will they revive the stones from the heaps of rubbish? And that's, this is probably a bit like Bob Ed was saying. <laughs> will they revive the stains from the heaps of rubbish? So will they take the rubbish and rebuild the wall and make the wall good again, is, is what he's saying here. And I've got, I looked up feeble. And feeble was, it's an adjective, lacking physically physical strength especially as a result of age or illness, faint lacking strength or character. So in the, in the um, verses, 
What are these feeble Jews doing? So what he was saying is, what are these weak in strength and faint in, in strength and character Jews doing? What are these people? They haven't even got strength to be able to do this. They can't do this. And we know that last week, Sam Ballot was Satan. So we, we, we're looking at a picture of Satan when we look at Sam Ballot. So, so here he's saying, look at, look at these Jews. What are they doing? They, they're just weak. They've got no strength. They, they, they just can't do it. What are they even doing? Look at the stones they're using. They're going to put up these stones. They're being burned. They probably won't crush it. Even if a fox, if, we, if I go into the next verse, even if a fox ran up on it, a fox would crush it. And it would come down and fall down and break. So I'll go into that next verse now, verse 3. Now Tobiah the Ammonite was beside him and he said, Whatever they build, if even the foxes go up on it, he will break down their stone wall. And what I want to use the fox as is a little bit of vine too. A little bit about vines too. Coming into David, just a little bit of stuff that I've done a little bit of research on on foxes. So here we have, oh hang on, foxes. Foxes are nocturnal animals that are more active at night time than they are during the day. So foxes are more active in the dark than what they are in the light. And the one thing I wanted to show about a fox. Holes are a safe place for them to sleep. So they get a hole and they get in there and sleep. They're depicted as mischievous animals that can leave behind significant damage. So they they are nocturnal. They like to hang in the dark. They like to hang around the dark places, and they they're mischievous and they can cause significant damage. And a fox symbolises symbolises worthlessness. So that's a little bit about a fox. Okay. Go back to two now, no, back to two. And he spoke before his brethren at the army of Samaria and said, what are these feeble Jews doing? Will they fortify themselves? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they complete it in a day? Will they revive the stones from the heaps of rubbish? Stones that are burned? Now Tobiah the Ammonite was beside him and said, whatever they build, if even a fox goes up on it, he will break down their stone wall. And last week I said what the walls are, what we're trying to rebuild, and what we're trying to rebuild up in our life, and the gaps we're trying to fill. See, I had a whole heap of unforgiveness. That wall had to crumble down, and now I've got to build up because I did have forgiveness once. I was born into the kingdom of God, so there was somewhere in my life that I was able to walk in forgiveness. I was able to walk in everything. That, that, that God wanted me to walk in and then I got to the age of knowing the difference between right and wrong. I made my own choices, my own decisions and then I built up a wall of unforgiveness and that, that come crumbling down and God had to rebuild that wall that I had in the beginning. I had a wall of forgiveness and God allowed me to build that wall of forgiveness back up in my life and we were talking about, I talked about the gaps and the gaps were there and there were situations in my life that were going to allow me not to walk in forgiveness and then I had to build, fill the gap in on the wall which is my wall of forgiveness that I'm building up now but the, plate, the gap that I had an area of work walking in unforgiveness now I've got to fill it in with forgiveness and start walking in forgiveness but look at the wall they built Tobias said even the foxes would be able to go on there I just read what fox was a fox is, it's a nocturnal thing. It's something that hangs around darkness. What, when we're building our wall and we're filling, filling in the gaps, what's going to be hanging around our life? There's going to be darkness hanging around our life. There's going to be spiritual darkness hanging around our lives that are going to what? That are going to want to pull us down and pull the wall down and break the wall down and, and crack, the, crack open the gaps. That we wouldn't be able to build this forgiveness up or the fill in the gaps where forgiveness needs to go into the unforgiveness. The, the foxes that hang around in the dark, they're mischievous animals. It's mischievous. Like Satan, God chose Satan. He's chosen the serpent because it was cunning. Of all, of all the animals, it was cunning. And he chose that because to, to be 
the one that was going to get um, disciplined. And Satan chose him to go into, not God, sorry, Satan chose him to go into so that he could be cunning and crafty, that he could do this stuff. And here we've got a fox that's mischievous, mischievous and it likes darkness. So I'm, I'm lighting the fox up too, that in this spiritual darkness, it is, it is the enemy. The fox is the enemy. It's a loner. Foxes hang around together. Uh, sorry, wolves hang around together. But foxes, are, if you have a look, you don't ever see three or four foxes on the side of the road when you see them at night time. You only ever see one. And he's eating the food, he's, eat, he's eat, eating the carcass or something. He's by himself. They travel alone. They just travel by themselves. They're loners. And then in Song of Solomon. So I, I established that little bit about a fox, that the, the fox is coming, it's, it's demonic, and to me it's demonic, and if I look into spiritual, it's coming to break down my wall, and, 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 and the same balance, which is Satan, is laughing at what I'm building. This is our own lives, this is what's going on, they're going to be mocking us, they're going to be laughing at us, and they're going to be putting putting this down and it's just going to feel like a battle that what am I in this battle for because it's going nowhere and it's never coming good and nothing's going to be good but we just got to hold on we got to hold on we, we don't have to believe the lies of the enemy so what if the rocks are no good but we know that Jesus can bring something good out of something bad that's no good we know he can raise it up so Song of Solomon's 2 verse 15 Catch, uh, catch us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines. For our vines have tender grapes. What did I say the fox was? Hangs around darkness, mischievous, and does significant damage. Sim and and symbolises worthlessness. It's the little fox. Not the big stuff. The big stuff we see coming, but it's the little foxes. They're little things that are there that are going to spoil the vine. They're going to come and they're going to eat the vine. They're going to chew on the vine or whatever they're going to do. They're just going to destroy the vine. What have I got here? The fox gives up, goes up on it and he will break down their stone wall. Catch us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines. What have we learned about a fox so far? They hang around the dark, they are mischievous, and leave behind a lot of damage and they symbolise worthlessness. This verse reminds us not to let obstacles in life damage our harvest before it matures. Foxes in the Bible are a warning to believers. So these verses remind us not to let obstacles in, in our life damage our harvest before it so we're building this wall. We've got the foxes that are going to come up onto the wall. They're going to come and they're going to hang around. We're not building the wall of unforgiveness anymore. We're building the wall of forgiveness. So what's the fox going to come and do? He's going to give us multiple and multiple opportunities that we would be out of and, and walk in unforgiveness. But it's not going to be big major stuff. It's going to be the little foxes. It's going to be little things, little Little things that someone might do to us that, oh no, I'm, I'm not having that unforgiveness. I'm, I'm good about that. It's a little, little bit of unforgiveness or a little bit of bitterness. It's the little things that are going to come. The foxes are the little things. We're building up. We think we're going great, but we've got this little fox, this little mischievous fox that will come and stand on the wall. And if we don't remove that fox, if we don't take that, and I've got the scripture here about Samson, he went out, because there was a lot of foxes in the area where Samson was at the time, and he went out and he got, got 300 foxes and he tied their tails together and he put them in the field to run in there and lift their tails on, like put a thing in there so they didn't put fire on it and let them run through the field so it would destroy the crops of the Philistines, which was another enemy of the, of the Jews. Is that no good, is it?
Is that good? Because I call a spade a spade. Mm -hmm. If they're playing pathetic, mate, I'll tell them. I said, no, in three sets yesterday, six mistakes. How can you make six mistakes in three sets of football? <laughs> that means you're making mistakes when they got the ball too. So you made six, you give away two penalties, you drop the ball three times, so he snobbed me. <laughs> but the, what am I going to say? Oh, no, mate, he's played great, mate. He's only got beat, that's all, but he's played great. No, there's a few things you've got to fix up in your game. And you might win again, but you'll make it competitive like you did before you started dropping the ball and doing everything like that. But he doesn't want to listen to that because I've never played in the cup before. I've only ever played a grade. I've never played the cup before. So he, he knows a lot more than me now. But I tell you, this thing he tells me that I was a bad footballer. If I played a grade or where I played, I was silly. I was stupid. I done stupid stuff on the football field. And, uh, and I know a little bit about it, but he won't listen to me for me to tell him because I'm, I'm not too hard, but I won't say, oh, fancy, fancy, fancy. So there's a little bit there. So there's a bit there for me to be able to take something on at the moment. I could take something on and, 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 and carry it. That's that little mischievous fox. That little one. I've built this wall up, mate. I started building this wall up 29 years ago, I think it was, or 28 years ago. I started building this wall of forgiveness up and forgiveness up and forgiveness up and forgiveness up. And now the darkness, the spiritual darkness, Sam Mallet, Satan, has sent out to me to go over to me and to run up on my wall this little mischievous fox that's not there to do any good. It's only there to do harm. And when it does harm, it does a lot of damage. It might only be little, but it does a lot of damage because we know who we are. See, to, to someone out there on the street or whatever, that little bit is nothing. Because they don't know who they are. But we know who we are. And we know that that little bit of unforgiveness, that tiniest little bit there, the smallest of foxes that are there, that we're letting to get up on our wall, that will crumble our wall down, <laughs> it's got to go. We've got to chase it. We've got to get rid of it off that wall. We've got to get it off there. We can't, we can't let it remain there because it'll crumble it down and we'll go down. And the Bible says that it'll be like someone who went out, a lady who cleaned up and then sent all the, all the demons out. And when she, and when, when she went back to her old wife, she, they went back, that demon, when, when, while she was cleaning up, it went out and found seven of its mates and brought them back. And when she was un, 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 not ready for it, the whole seven of them come in there and made her seven times worse than what she ever was before. That's scriptural. We've got to be careful. This little mischievous fox, mate, he can start little in there now, but the fall that he makes us have can be seven times worse than what we've ever been before. And we need to know that and be careful of that and understand that. The devil don't like us. He's not here for us. He's not, he's not worried about us. He doesn't care about us. Ezekiel 13, he hates us. And I like him hating me. Because I hate him too. <laughs> I don't want to be his friend. Ezekiel 13, thus says the Lord God, in verse 3, thus says the Lord God, woe to the foolish prophets who follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. Foolish prophets who follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. So we've got to be careful. These, the, the, this, this here little fox, it doesn't have to be something that I carry inside of me. Now, this is what I'm going to explain now. There can be false prophets that come along. And they don't have to come in a pack of wolves. 
They don't have to come with a big T. They can just come by themselves. Because foxes travel by themselves. So, the foolish prophets, is, thus says the Lord God, woe to the foolish prophets who follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. O Israel, this is the next verse now, verse 4. O Israel, your prophets are like foxes in the desert. Thus says the Lord God, Woe to the foolish prophets who follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. O Israel, your prophets are like foxes in the deserts. <laughs> what are the little mischievous things that cause a lot of damage that hangs around the darkness? is a fox. It's a fox. And spiritually, if we look at something like that, spiritually, we're looking at a demonic force. We're looking at a spiritually dark, a spiritual darkness. We're looking at a, a spiritual dark, darkness that's going to be a, a, a wolf done up in sheep's clothing, but this time we've got a fox done up in sheep's clothing. Wolves come together. Foxes are by themselves. We've got a, we've got a fox done up in wolf's, in, wolf's, in, in sheep's clothing that are mischievous. They are mischievous. They, are, they cause a lot of damage. They, they, they make you feel worthless. They, 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 just, they, you know, they make you feel worthless. They're speaking over your life and then they search you around. If I, I'll read the next verse. <laughs> Go on up into the... Uh, your prophets are like foxes in the desert. Foolish prophets who follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. They've seen nothing. Go on up into the gaps. Go on up into the area. You've got this fox now that's come and spoken a prophetic word over your life or they're trying to make out their spiritual and they're speaking into your life and they're dawning to the gaps. And what's the gaps? The gaps in the area that I'm filling no longer with unforgiveness. I'm filling with, forgive, with forgiveness. I'm filling no longer with hate, but now I'm filling it up with love. And it's going to go, these, these boxes of the false prophets are going to speak into areas in your life that you're trying to build up and get right in God and what's it going to do? It's going to come crumbling down because it's, it's, it's not of God. <laughs> Going up into the gaps, the gaps are what we fill in now when we have unforgiveness. We will we, we fill with forgiveness. Hate, we fill with love. Next verse. They have envisioned futility and false divination, saying, Thus says the Lord, but but the Lord has not sent them. Yet they hope that the word may be confirmed. So thus, I'm going back to the beginning. Thus says the Lord God, Woe to the foolish prophets who follow their own spirit and have, have seen nothing. They, they, they haven't seen nothing. Oh, I can see this, I can see that. They're coming, they oh, no, whatever. Everyone's had a prophet over and speaks, someone pray over them and, and speak that kind of stuff and speak stuff into their life like that. You prophets are like, are like foxes in the desert. Foolish prophets. I'm glad this is God's word. Eh? It's not me saying this. I'm only reading scripture. He's straight out. Lily says, oh, God, Jesus is not like that. Lily, the Bible I read, he is straight out. He never shines to the left or the right. He's straight out. And he's been straight out here. Why are the false prophets, the foolish prophets? Oh, Israel, your prophets are like foxes in the deserts. You have not grown up into the gaps to build. You have not gone up into the gaps to build a wall for the house of Israel to stand in battle on the day of the Lord. <laughs> what day are we talking about? The day of the Lord. What are we filling these gaps in for? We're not filling these gaps in for me to look good here. And we're filling these gaps in for me to be ready when Jesus comes. When he returns, the day of that great and awful day of the Lord, when he returns, I'm filling the gaps of unforgiveness of it up with, with uh, forgiveness. I'm filling the gaps of hatred up with love. I'm filling them up not for me, but I'm filling it up for that great and awesome day of the Lord when he returns so my, that I'll be ready 
then I'll be ready. My gaps will be filled up and I'll be ready. But be careful because the false prophets, they're like div the prophets are like divinations. They're actually like foxes running, run, running around in the desert. They're coming. They're mischievous. They will do a lot of damage and they'll pull down a lot of stuff that's been done and they'll make that crumble and fall. They'll stand on your wall and bring it down. <laughs> and we've got to be careful. We've got to be careful. We've got to be careful when we've got to speak in, even into the congregation and into our life. That's why I'm careful. Like with Nathan, I don't know where he's at. I don't even know what, what he, I don't even know what he's to do communion next week or share on Wednesday night because I don't know where he's at spiritually. Them foxes are there and they're damaging him. They're bringing stuff. That I don't know what they're doing, but he's not strong. How many times has he contracted anyone here? Once he has been. When you're away from the sheep, what's the fox going to do? He's going to eat on your carcass. He's going to come and whisper in your ear. He's going to bring false people along that have been hurting the church and things like that that are going to speak into his life. That place where that gap has been filled in, they're going to be just taking stuff out of there so that the forget unforgiveness will rise up a little bit more. But it was closed with forgiveness. But now the unforgiveness is going to come back in there. And we have to be careful. Very careful because that can be any one of us. And it's going to be look good and sweet. It's going to be look so good and sweet. It's going to look like the real deal, deal, whatever you want to call it. It's going to look good. But it's not. It's a mischievous little fox that wants to come and cause more harm. And when he causes more harm, there's a lot of damage left behind. A lot of damage left behind. Foxes in the Bible also represent sins that look small and unimportant but can turn dangerous. So he does a lot of damage because he sins. The, the, the foxes are, are known in the Bible as sins and they look small but they're dangerous. They are very dangerous. And we have to be on guard. Going back to, to um, Song of Solomon, catch us the foxes. The little foxes that spoil the vine. Catch us the foxes. What are we going to do? We've got a seal. This is going, this is going back to flick. But we, I, I, know, I could quote that a hundred times to you, a thousand times that scripture. Probably have some little foxes that spoil the vine. We don't look at it. And say, well, that's right. <laughs> Catch the foxes that are spoiling the vine. We are the vine. We heard it in communion. Bob had said it in communion. We're the vine. We're trying to build up a wall that that fox is going to get up and make crumble down. We've got to, we've got to understand that. We've got to catch it. What are we going to do? We've got to know. If we're catching them, we've got to notice them. And when we notice them, we break their power. We break their authority. We break the things over their life. We break what they're doing, what they're trying to do in their life. We, we bind them up, whatever it takes. We get them foxes. And I'll go into Samson in Judges 5, uh, 15, verse 4. Then Samson went and caught 300 foxes and he took torches, turned the foxes' tight tail to tail and put a torch between each tail. Well there we go, we just look at, you know, he put the fire and he went in and he destroyed the, the crops and that of the the, um, the Philistines. But look what he's done. He's actually called it foxes. And what are foxes? Foxes are the little things that He's actually gone out and he's caught them. Why? For God to give us warning, for God to speak to us. We've got, you might have 300. You might have, well, we do have the strength of Samson, but you might have the, the number of foxes around your life that's trying to pull you down and destroy you. Samson had 300 and he caught the whole lot of them. He caught every one of them. We have to catch them around our lives. Because if we leave them too late, what do they do? They cause a lot of damage. A lot of damage. 
and they're dangerous. And they make small things look unimportant. That's in the little things. Like I'm saying with no one, if I don't deal with that, then you see, oh, no, that's nothing. If I don't deal with it, it'll, it'll, it, in me, not in him, but in me, it'll grow something big. It'll be something bigger <laughs> that can explode into something that I don't know what it can get to. But anyway, scholars say that Tobiah, when I remember when I read Tobiah back in Mike and Nehemiah, mentioned foxes because there were numerous in that area then. Tobiah was suggesting whatever they build, if even a fox goes up on it, he will break down their stone wall. Tobiah was also referring to the stone wall being low. going to make us feel low and feel weak and he's going to send this little fox on, on the wall, he's going to send him along he's that little thing, he's only a mind a, a little thing, small and he's going to seem unimportant but he's going to feel him along because at, at times he's going to make us feel low and at weak and that little thing's going to come along and when we feel low and weak we're going to say oh look, it doesn't matter, they don't care nobody cares don't worry about this. Oh, don't mean nothing. I bet you they're doing it or something like that. And that little fox, that little thing that seemed unimportant is going to turn out dangerous and it's going to do a lot of damage. A lot of damage. A lot of damage. Tobiah was also referring to the stone wall being low and weak and that's what they did. They didn't build back up to its proper height. They built it down lower. Because he wanted to go and get, he got stones from where he'd been burned and destroyed in the last war. He took them, and that's what Sam Ballot was saying on that, or tomorrow was saying that, that oh, look at it, it'll only tumble down and the foxes will run up there, it'll fall down. Remember? So it's, it, it's saying that things we what we're building with are weak. They're going to come, he's going to whisper in our ear, what we're building with. Not as high as what it should be, it's only low. What you're building with is weak. The foxes are going to pull it down. If you don't get it, you don't do this right. If you don't do that right, the foxes are going to come. The little darkness are going to come. The areas where they're going to make us feel low. The areas where they're going to make us feel rejected and unloved and unwanted and all that stuff. That's when it's going to raise up when the, the anger and things like that are going to raise up more because the little foxes are there waiting to pounce on when they make you feel like that. That a fox would not struggle to ascend to the top of it and tumble it down since it was built carelessly. <laughs> That's just said Ballot laughing. And remember last week he was laughing vigorously. And you know, he was just laughing and laughing and laughing. Well, that's what that is. That a fox would not struggle. You're nothing. I'm going to defeat you. You are no battle. You've got no strength. You don't know how to pray properly. You don't know how to read your Bible. And they're just going to hit you with these things and make you, make you feel worse and, and make you feel, oh, I'm struggling. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. And I'm going to be made worse. To the top and tumble it down since it was built carelessly. You haven't been working in that area. You know, oh, look what you've done there, but you haven't really forgiven. Or just these little things that are going to come on. I'm saying they're foxes. I'm saying they're your own mind and your own thoughts. What you're thinking are going to come. It's not the devil. It's what we're thinking ourselves. And then the little fox is going to come along and run on that wall and crumble it down. And you're going to think, oh, well, I'm hopeless anyway. I'm no good. I can't get it right. And you're just going to keep running away from God. Amen. So that's what the Lord showed me this week that that um, the same little things. You know, and it's not just the big things, it's the little things that we've got to be careful of. The little, you know, just the little unforgiveness, little little things that'll come along that can make you be bitter, or can make you feel unforgiveness, or can make you feel whatever. Like, I'm only mentioning some of the things that happen in me. You know what happened in your lives and, and, and what goes on in your own life. But it's this little fox. 
And if we don't deal, if we don't catch that little fox the way Samson caught, caught that little fox, it can cause a lot of damage. It can cause a lot of, it can actually, everything that God's been doing in our life, it can bring tumbling down. And then we'll have to rebuild again and it'll be even weaker this time than what it was last time. But if we keep building now with what God's done, and when it comes, we see that gap and we put something in there like love or something like forgiveness in that gap or peace or joy or goodness or kindness in that gap where, where we couldn't share before but now share now where we where we um where we had um we couldn't give start giving in, in areas that we couldn't give start giving in them areas and that's putting blocks in the wall and the gaps in the wall and filling it up so then all them foxes can't come and get in your ear and that's what god wants us to do he wants us to work on building the strength of this wall. And the strength isn't in the material we use. The strength's in Him. We've got to build it up in Him. Amen? Thank you, Father. So that's the word this week. Watch out for them small foxes.